I'm here in Burnaby, Canada, uh, pretty close to Vancouver, visiting Volt Bike and checking out the Yukon. This is their fat bike. Uh, it's kind of neat, you know, that it actually comes in a couple of different configurations. You can see over here, we got the box set up at the fenders and the rack kit. That's like an extra 80 bucks and it might add a couple pounds, but um, I think that kind of the, the base flavor is, is like this, right? Just very standard fat bike look. Uh, we've got those nice wide 26 by four inch tires, a uh, decent tread, you know, uh, kind of got the cutout rims, double walled with a uh, red tire liner in there. I was talking to the founder, George, and he was telling me that their older tire liner was a little bit weak, so they've upgraded it. Um, seems like a really nice guy. You know, he's been doing this for a few years, selling predominantly online, direct to consumer, and that's how they're able to keep their, their prices a little bit lower. It means that you can't test ride it as easily uh, and that you have to screw around a little bit, setting it up and, and getting warranty service. But um, that was kind of the idea of bringing one out like this. This is how it would arrive in that box handlebars sort of zip tied to the top tube right here We've got the stem already so you'd have to you know basically fix that onto the stem and kind of straighten it out a little bit but otherwise the bike is pretty much set up and and you know ready to ride that's that's the idea um fairly heavy box you know fairly large fairly heavy i was weighing this uh, just the bike earlier without the fenders and everything and it was like 58 pounds so you know um it it feels like a lot when it's in in that box i actually think that's a decent weight for a fat bike you know i was reviewing the saunders another very affordable fat tire electric bike um like a month ago or something and and that one was like 59 pounds and it didn't have the seven speed actually this is a six speed I just confirm that yeah six speed cassette in the back so this one you've actually got gears and they've got kind of this extra large granny gear at the top for climbing and you know wading through mud and stuff um, or snow as it were and that's cool like this definitely it, it sort of broadens your the terrain that you can you can ride comfortably on and, and sort of the way that you pedal um, it's got pedal assist it's got throttle I did notice that the front chain ring is is a little bit large you know if this was stepped down a little bit you might have even more leverage but having that big gear on the back definitely helps they've got a nice kind of a bash guard or derailleur guard right here that I like Turney TX is the derailleur it's you know kind of the base level Shimano but it definitely gets the job done I'm glad that it, it actually has some gears and stuff because it's a heavier bike and that's going to help you hit uh, you know a little bit higher top speeds and, and ride more comfortably so I like that. We were looking at the tires a minute ago. It's Chow Yang. I, that might actually be what is on the Saunders. <laughs> I wouldn't be surprised if they're made in, in similar plants in China. Uh, seat post here is 27.2 in case you want to put like a thud buster or something and get a little bit more cushion. Of course, the tires offer some cushion just straight away because they're so large. The max PSI is 30, but you can take it down to like five depending on the terrain you're on. Of course, the lower the air pressure, you're going to have better traction and more surface area so you won't sink into soft terrain but it's also going to slow you down there's more friction drag so keep that in mind keep that in mind we've got uh, our tech mechanical disc brakes with motor inhibitors 180 millimeter rotor on the front 160 millimeter on the rear neither one of these uh, hubs are quick release so you're going to have to have some tools here is the power cable this one has um, sort of a quick disconnect point which is great in case you have to take the wheel off to do maintenance on the spokes or on the you know replacing your tube or tires or something I like that I also like that they've got a sort of a bash guard aluminum alloy um, thing on the chain ring up here might help your pants to sort of not get extremely greasy and if you are taking this off-road if you hit a log or something it, it won't come into contact directly with the chain uh, it's a fairly purpose-built frame you know when you really think about it there's the the wires go straight through the the down tube and aside from this plastic box which you know it adds a little bit of clutter that's the controller um it's fairly sleek you know and the fact that it's this sort of matte black helps everything to blend in you know we got the throttle up here we got the wires and everything and it, it sort of fades into the bike some of these bikes have like a little bracket um that this piece can kind of connect to but I didn't see that here so there's a little bit more loose wires happening but it's not terrible and I love that it's got an integrated headlights in the stock version 
and an integrated tail light if you upgrade to the fenders and, and the rack. I really think this is awesome, frankly. Like riding around on a fat bike, being able to do some errands, take some stuff with you. There's no bottle cage on, on either of these. And so, you know, if you have a rack, you can put a little bag, like a trunk bag or some panniers and make it into a utility thing, like sport utility. I like that. And the fenders, you know, aluminum alloy, they, they might rattle a little bit. I noticed that the front one on this one was, you know, you could kind of straighten it out a little bit. It's pretty close to the, the tire, but it's gonna keep you a lot cleaner. Being in Canada, you know, it, it rains and stuff here on the West Coast and keeping you dry is, is sort of a nice little utilitarian feature. I like that it has a kickstand. It's sort of mounted here out of the way of the pedals. It is adjustable length. It stands the bike up pretty well. Feels pretty, pretty stable to me. That's a good look at uh, kind of the components on the bike. You know, basic weld-o pedals here. Um, I'd probably replace those with like bigger ones. You have that like, more surface area, you can get them on Amazon. Um, yeah, that's, that's, a, that's a good look. So this is about 20 inches. So it's like a 20 inch frame. It only comes in that one size and then 24 from, from the seat post to the sort of the head tube. I, I would consider getting a shorter stem and angling it up and maybe some cruiser bars or something just for a more relaxed ride. But this is kind of set up for like off-road, a little bit more aggressive. The grips are standard. They don't have lockers or anything, but I, I like that th the one on the right's a little bit wider considering how many different like tools and, and uh, interfaces they've got mounted here. That's a lot. You know, they just squeezed in the <laughs> flick bell with the compass. We've got the big, you know, oversized index shifters here. A uh, plus, as far as this goes, is if you're riding in a cold weather and you've got gloves on, these are real easy. They're, they're big versus like little tiny things down here. And they kind of stay out of the way of the throttle right there. So it's not terrible, you know, it's, yeah, it looks pretty clean and, you know, but it's, it, there's definitely more value component with this bike, uh, but you still get decent power. So if we look back here, uh, this is a 500 watt internally geared eight fun hub motor. You can kind of see some specs down there on the bottom. Um, it's a 48 volt system. I'm gonna try to bring this up a little bit. There we go, right there. Uh, it's a 48 volt system. The battery packs 48 by 10.4 amp hours, lithium ion, it uses Samsung cells, it weighs about seven pounds and it can be charged on or off the frame, which is great. It just makes this a little bit handy if you're parking in the garage and topping it off or if you're taking the battery off, hanging it off your car and maybe charging this inside. Uh, you know, extreme heat, extreme cold can be rough on batteries. And I'd recommend, you know, if you're storing this, try to store it at like 50, 60% over time. That's like a good healthy charge state. Um, when you charge it all the way, it takes a little bit longer. It balances all the cells and that, you know, you're pushing the voltage um, that over time can kind of wear it out if you're leaving it plugged in. So that's kind of some advice on that. Here's the charger, weighs a couple pounds, actually like a pound and a half. It's got a metal end piece, so it's not gonna crack if it gets stepped on quite as easily. And it does fit right back up in there. You can kind of see when you take this little plug off but it's pretty tight, you know? I was able to plug it in a minute ago, but it's a little bit crowded just because of this controller box. Uh, the battery comes off really easily though, and it's got a nice handle on it, so I might as well try to show that. Oh, and a charge level indicator on the top, so that's cool. Just turn the keys here. There we go. Take it off. You can see it looks like it's got a couple of mounting points there on the frame, so those two screws. And it looked pretty straight when I was riding it and messing around with it earlier. So yeah, again, Samsung sells. This bike comes with a one year sort of comprehensive warranty. Um, there we go. You won't necessarily have a shop to like go into. Oh, and the key does not have to be left in when riding. You wouldn't necessarily have a shop to go into. You have to do a little bit of setup yourself, but you, you save a lot of money in US dollars right now. It's like 1350 or, you know, like kind of closer to $14.50 if you get the rack and everything. $70 shipping, not bad. Definitely keeping the price low on this thing. Uh, in Canada, it's like a couple hundred dollars more based on the exchange rate. So, um, you know, you're, you're paying a little bit less, you're doing a little bit more, it's a little bit more involved process, but the warranty is designed to, to sort of cover um, manufacturer defects and, uh, you know, these guys have a warehouse here. They've been doing it for a few years and they seem pretty committed to, you know, I mean, keeping their keeping their bikes on the road and helping people. It seems like they've had positive customer feedback. So it's a different model, direct to consumer, but uh, kind of neat to see. 
So I think that's, that's about it. We talked about the motor, we talked about the battery. If we get up here to the cockpit, got the display panel on the left, fairly easy to reach. Just hold down the power button for a second. Um, just comes right to life. And you can see sort of the six levels of battery charge there with the, with the bars. And then the speed, it's in kilometers per hour right now. And then odometer. If you want to turn on those lights we talked about, you press the current button and there, there it goes. Kind of see it lighten up, woo! And of course, you can arrow up or down for different levels of assist. It seems to start out in level one, which is fine. That just means as soon as you pedal, it's gonna give you a little bit of power and reach those lower speeds. You can arrow all the way up to five, or you can take it all the way down to zero and use this as a cycle computer and then just, you know, throttle. And the throttle does override. So it's a good system. I, I, like, I like it. You know, it's, it works pretty well. I'm going to take it all the way up to five and do a little, little ride test and try to show you how responsive the cadence sensor is. Got it set up. Here we go. Let's get a couple pedal strokes in. When you stop pedaling, you definitely feel the drag of those big tires, but um, you know, they add that, that kind of fun and versatility in how the bike rides. So now we've got a hill. I'm just gonna let it coast to standstill and then use that throttle and try to see what kind of power we can get out of this thing. not the world's steepest hill, but we're definitely, you know, it'd be a lot to climb at this speed, 24, 25, 26 kilometers per hour, you know, all the way up to like 32, close to 20 mile per hour mark. So pretty good. You can see when I, when I was really throttling it, the, the battery level dropped because it's just measuring voltage. Um, and then as soon as I slowed down, the battery level kind of stabilized again. And they've even got a power read out there. So you can see it's like full power. <laughs> Good to have those disc brakes, decent stopping power, and I like the little, you know, mid-rise bars here. It's a good setup. It's like I'm going south, back towards America right now. Cool. Woo! Fun. Yeah. Might have to take it off road over here and try to climb something real. I'm gonna go ahead and shift down though to one of those easier gears. Cause you do, it, it takes a bit of energy to pedal because of that larger chain ring we were talking about. Okay, so I'm gonna try to scale that. It's definitely a hill. Got the throttle going. Ugh. Pretty much made it. Look at that. One-handed, whoa, boy, woo, that's awesome. You know, the power of a 48 volt battery and a 500 watt geared motor is pretty good. Uh, but keep in mind, if you're, if you're doing that and you're, you weigh a little bit more, you're climbing a big hill, um, you know, the motor might shut itself off to try to avoid overheating and issues like that. So pedal assist is definitely gonna extend your range and give you the best climbing, uh, climbing experience. So yeah, that's the Volt Bike Yukon for the full ride up on this and other Volt bikes. I'll see you back at electricbikereview.com. Ride safe. Oh, and speaking of safety, they, uh, they'll throw in a helmet. So that's why I'm not wearing my standard helmet right now. I'm wearing like a size large white, kind of like, you know, it's a little bit loose or whatever, but it is DOT approved and it's got like a nice little buckle right here. So that was kind of a fun little extra. Um, thought I'd mix it up a little bit. So anyway, for the full review, I'll see you back at the site. Leave any feedback if you've got one of these bikes from a few years ago, if you've had that experience with the tires or whatever, um, you know, sound off. I only get limited time with the bikes and do my best to give an overview and some insight, but you know, um, yeah, I can't, I can't really speak to shops about this and get their feedback because it's uh, business to consumer. So later.